whatever you're commenting on. The beats were in search of the authentic American experience, and I feel like we people that that never goes out of style. That search for the authentic moment, feeling like you're present and connected with people. So that's I think that may be missing from today's literature. There's irony is the is sort of um, the sort of motto of the day. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, now, uh, in, uh, in some of the press materials here, uh, Dan Radcliffe um, said he thinks of the, of the movie as a love story, um, and. To uh, was it when you when you're writing the story, you know you've you've got to balance this love story with um, with like the historical data um, mm. uh, about the uh, the not the murder mystery but the murder itself and about the rise of the beats. You know um, this was it hard balancing this sort of tripartite. Not really. I mean, I'm much more old school and having to boil down things to a theme and knowing what the movie is about and being able to articulate that in a couple of sentences for myself. And Austin and I spent a lot of time, you know, even before we started writing, note carding the script out. You know, I'm a big fan of the note card one per scene method to old school on a table so you could see your whole script. And when we talked about the central relationship between Alan and Lucian and what this movie meant for us, yes, it's definitely the birth of an artist story. But also it's about a certain kind of love story. You know, I feel like when we looked at the relationships that we had in college that were similar to Alan and Lucian's, and the more I talk about it, the more universal I find it, that you meet somebody who's either more attractive and popular and worldly and charismatic than you, often at that age, 18, 19. And that person sees in you, for the first time, possibilities about you that you never knew existed. And they start helping you tear down your wall of possibilities and become a new person. You know, whether it's as simple as liking new cool authors or new cool bands or showing you an art or a trade that you never knew that you'd be good at. You know, Allen Ginsberg wanted to be a labor lawyer when he first got to Columbia. And it was Lucian Carr who said, uh-uh-uh. <laughs> right. I see the soul of a poet inside of you. But here's the flip side with this relationship is that these figures want you to grow, but only so high and never necessarily as high as themselves. And in a lot of writing classes, they often say metaphorically, you have to kill your parents in order to really free yourself and find your own voice. Similar to that, the greatest irony is with these mentor figures, with these people who have kind of seduced you and taken you in and who you've fallen in love with. Ultimately, you have to surpass them or cut them out of your life in order to really become yourself. Austin, who's much more, artic much more articulate than me, calls it the emotional violence that comes with the birth of a self. For me, in more kind of like contemporary Oprah speak, you know, I see this <laughs> as... Good. The, as a love story, but we've all been there. That tortured, beautiful poet slash actor slash guitarist slash whoever we fell in love with in college, who we tried so hard to be the person that we thought they would fall in love with. And it's not until the ashes of that relationship, it's not until the breakup, do you finally get the strength to realize, no, it's about being who I am and you getting the strength to be yourself. So in that way, that was the love story that was really at heart. It was about that relationship of striving to make this person love you so much to realize that it's only by ultimately breaking away from this person that you get the self-confidence to love yourself and then be loved. Just to jump in there too, what I would say to add to that is that if you read the biographies and the journals, Allen Ginsberg's especially, the linkage between sexuality, love, creativity, um, transformation is all there on the page. Like it, it wasn't like we were trying to tell three different stories. They were all wrapped up with each other from the beginning. So that made it really easy. Uh, admittedly, we had to let go of the research at a certain point and just write something that felt emotional and would be a dramatic story. But I'm really proud of how much is in the script that is actually f direct from historical experience. I mean, lots of the, uh, the uh, Alan's poetry at the end, Lucian's first words he says to, to Alan are credibly the very first words that he said to Alan. So we know that these things are factual. So it wasn't, it, there was almost breadcrumbs in the history. But the Beats never robbed the library. Yeah. However, the two people in front of you <laughs> may have had some personal experience with that. Wow. <laughs> and that's all we can say. That's all you can say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Austin, John, thank you both very much for being here with me today. Thank you so um, much. Uh, the movie's great. Uh, Kill Your Darlings. It opens... October 16th. October 16th. And uh, take care, guys. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, man. Thanks.